everybody. Good to see you. It is Wednesday, October 28th. I know because I looked at the calendar four times. Um, glad you're here. Before I forget, the next Change the Shed will be on November 11, which is two weeks from now, because next week I'm doing a bunch of book launch things, and um, I will be focusing on that. So there will be some live uh, events that I'll be doing next week, and you can register for those if you want on my website. And I already put a link in the um, uh, on the page for Change the Shed about where that is. So... Um, yeah, I'm not sure what all of those will be, but there'll be a couple webinars about um, making the book and stuff like that. So I'm talking about this book, which those of you who know me have seen me talk about ad nauseum. So next week is the launch week. Um, gosh, okay, so my little screen looks different. Uh, I think that my software wanted me to update it and I didn't, so there you go. I think it's working though. Y'all will let me know if something uh, looks weird. Um, okay. Anyway, let's see if I can get my other camera going. Oh, good. Okay. Okay. Ooh, okay. Got it working. Um, I have been working on this piece. Those of you who were here um, two weeks ago, we'll notice that it looks different and that this is what I was weaving before. I hated it, y'all. I just, um, I didn't like it. So I started over. Um, can you all hear me? I got my microphone in a weird place today. Um, you'll tell me if you can't. Yeah. Okay. I heard from the voice upstairs that you can hear me. So the picture on the bottom left was um, what I had going last time, and I really didn't like it. I didn't like all the various colors and the pink, and I'm trying to make it look like fire, and I thought it didn't look like fire at all. So um, I started over. That is on the back of this, and I don't know if you can even see it. No, it's around the bottom. Um, I'm not turning this loom around because it is heavy and big. Um, but anyway, so I started over and there you are. It does happen occasionally that I start over. So I know, I know I'm not going to like something. Um, welcome everyone. Yeah, we had snow here. We had uh, over a foot of snow in Fort Collins, which was awesome. Um, it's melting now, but it will help the fires a lot. It won't put them out, but um, it might allow the firefighters to get a handle on them, I hope. Um, so far, Estes Park has been spared, so that's the city in the most danger at the moment. And Rocky Mountain National Park, um, which has been closed, I think, from the fires. Okay, cool. So, this piece... <laughs> I am getting a huge kick out of... Um, the double set pieces. Oh, remember I did this one? I'm sure many of you saw that. <laughs> you saw this being woven when the pandemic started. Um, it's called Hot Flash. So this is in the same vein, only I wanted it to be, I needed it to be bigger. Uh, uh, the design, whatever. This is the same 10 inches. The center part will be the same size, but um, I added a border of flames. It's called... Um, I was told there would be a hand basket. So it's my next tribute to 2020. Best year ever, right? Um, thanks, Marlena. Yeah, I, I thought the new colors without the pink, I just wanted more consistent colors. I wanted red, orange, and uh, yellow. And I did mix a few colors in the bundles, but I kept them much more consistent and I liked it a lot better, especially because it's a frame. I didn't want there to be so much going on. Oh, thanks, Connie. I'm glad you saw my Damascus thing. Hey, the link came out for the Damascus talk, so I'll put that in my newsletter tomorrow if anyone missed the talk from the Damascus um, school. You can watch that talk. Some of the images and stuff I talked about I'll be um, showing again next week in the webinars, but I won't go into quite so much detail as I did about the making of the book, so if you're interested in 
how the book was made, um, you can watch the talk I did for Damascus Fiber Arts School. Um, cool. Oh, yeah, the foot is back. Marlo, you're right. So, okay, so there's a foot in this one. This one's called Hot Flash. Um, and Bigfoot. So this is another foot. This one has a shoe. But, and also the same, I wanted to keep one thing in this, if I do a series. This is the second one, so it's already a series, right? Um, I wanted to keep this blue daisy pattern in the fabrics in the piece. And so this is a skirt that has the daisy pattern. And I'm just seeing that, I don't know about that curve there. Um, anyway, yeah, so hopefully that will be a little bit something that goes through. If I do more of them, we'll see. Um, cool. Okay. Good deal. So I'll show you the cartoon just for fun. Um, let's see if you can see this. So I drew the whole thing out this time, except I haven't drawn all of the edge pieces, but let's see if I back this up. That's better. So there is a foot and a basket and a little person falling out of the basket. And these are all flames. And this says 2020. And I am going to weave this text in there. I was told there would be a hand basket. So um, I really needed to do something that was fun. And I was weaving this last night and I was having so much fun. Um, the uh, double set thing is <laughs> really a lot of fun, honestly. So it goes faster. So this part didn't take that long to weave. Um, and then this, of course, is much slower, but it allows me to get more detail. So that's why I have enjoyed it so much. Um, okay, let's see if I can bring this in. I'm working on this part today. Maybe I'll put it there. So this part is in eight ends per inch. And this is all 16, and so y'all are not going to be happy with me weaving at 16 because it's hard to see, but um, I did the same thing where I'm weaving these little petals, and then I'm using the blue just as a divider, so then I'll fill this part in with white again. But I need to, of course, fill in the blue before I can weave um, right on top of that there. So one thing I'm doing is using... Um, I only have, this is the Ross loom and I only have one shedding mechanism on it. I suspect I could buy another one and have two sets with shedding mechanisms. And if I keep doing this double set thing, I might try that on this loom. I absolutely could do it on a Murex also. I have extra shedding mechanisms for Murex. So actually maybe I'll do that before I buy a new piece for this loom. But um, using an open shed rod, which is just a knitting needle, uh, for the finer set at this point. Um, and then I just push that up and it will stay. And that just helps me find the one of the sheds easier, more easily. Like this. And I still haven't gotten new glasses, so you see me struggling, getting older. Also, super hard to see these. That went one too far. Super hard to see the 16 EPI. I don't know how Kathy Todd Hooker does her. Does she wear like, I should ask her this. Does she wear like those loops that um, people who have to see things magnified wear? Like how does she work at 32 ends per inch? I don't understand how you could see it. Part of it's probably just practice. So this is going to be a little bit tedious. I'm not going to um, make you watch me do this forever, but I'll show you how I do the where the 8 EPI meets the... So I have to pick the other shed. 
So the open, little open shed rod works quickly, but then I have to pick the other one because at this point I don't have a shedding device on the other shed. And I could do like, there's plenty of other things I could do. I could do a little, um, like a Navajo shedding thing or little, um, because this area is small, I could actually put um, just some leashes that I would pull forward. But no, I'm gonna stick with the slow way. And I have to use a shed stick on this. There's no way I could pick 16 EPI with my fingers. They're way too, my fingers are way too fat. Okay, it helps if I get to the right spot too. So I'm only using one strand of Weaver's Bazaar Fine on 16 EPI. I think you could maybe use two. I haven't tried it. It would be close. I'm going to need a new piece of this blue. Let's see. Oh, Sarah, that's awesome. She says she um, pre-ordered my book and picked it up. She can pick it up today at a local bookstore. I have... Um, noticed that those of you who ordered from independent bookstores are happy about it now. The book costs more, of course, than if you order it on Amazon, but Amazon is having some struggles. Um, several people have gotten notices that it won't show up until December, and I'm really sorry about that. It's some kind of Amazon thing. I suspect they just didn't order enough books, and so they're waiting for more to come. And I don't know if it depends on where you live. One person I know is in Santa Fe. Another person is in Texas, I think. So um, I don't know what the deal is. And I am sorry about it. But obviously, I don't have any control over the distribution of the book. And I am not selling it myself before you all ask. I am not. Okay, one thing I love about this a Ross Loom is that the, the more I use it, the more I love that the space between the two layers of warp is deeper. So I can just stick my hand right in there and pull these through. Of course, I could poke them through from the front too, but it's really nice. Um, um, okay. Oh, McKenna's talking about trying a double set on the saffron. Yeah, you could do that on the saffron. You would just we, um, warp, warp it double with a thinner warp. Um, and then I would use some twining or something to even it out maybe. Um, that's something that uh, would be an interesting video to make actually. You're making me think, McKenna. <laughs> I always, you guys have great questions and I'm always like, oh, I should make a video about that. Um, can't make a video about everything, but maybe eventually. Oh yeah, Barbara, that's funny. I don't think you've explained your title. Yeah, the younger people won't get it and maybe a bunch of you won't get it anyway. I think it's funny, but have you ever heard the saying or, it, and I don't, I think it's an American saying, um, so it might be foreign in another country, but there's a saying about going to hell in a handbasket. And I feel like this is 2020 completely. We're going to hell in a handbasket. It's just been a hard year. And um, so this piece is about, is called, I was told there would be a handbasket, which is um, kind of a joke meme that you see going around a lot. It's an attempt at some kind of humor. Mary, can I explain the double set setup a little more? Is it too complicated? It's not, Mary. I can sh um, explain it really quickly. And then um, we can always talk about it elsewhere, but basically, I don't know if you can see this. So the, um, where the heddles are, I warp the loom with two warps in every slot. So at eight ends per inch, I actually have two warps in each slot. And if you can see here, I'm weaving at eight ends per inch here, and there are two warps every time. So if I spread these, you'll be able to see it. There are two warps that it's going over and under, over and under, and they're just bundled together as if they were one warp. And then over here, 
Let's see if this will focus. Maybe you can see it better like that. See how there's two there? And here they're spread apart and there's only one. So this is a trick tapestry weavers use a lot to create a texture difference, but it also allows you to create more detail in certain areas of a tapestry, which is why I'm doing it here. Um, and basically that's all there is to it. It's a little bit iffy on the edges and I've been playing with how to make sure the edges look crisp. I think I did pretty well in this one and I'm doing kind of the same thing. When I come to one of these edges where the two sets meet, um, and this of course was woven this way. I'm making sure that the fluffier yarn is covering up that edge. It probably helps that I'm using, this is Harrisville Kohler Singles, same as here. This is all Harrisville Kohler Singles, and this is Weaver's Bazaar 18.2. So this is a really shiny, crisp yarn, and this is a very fuzzy yarn. And so the fuzzy yarn is helping me kind of hide where that edge is, because when you come to the edge, there's two warps there, and this one has been going over two at a time, and this one's only going over one at a time. So there's a little mismatch at the edge in terms of um, shedding and that this yarn is so much fatter than this yarn. Uh, this yarn is fatter than this yarn. So anyway, um, it's fun. It's, I think I've have been having a lot of fun with it, which is, um, I think, an important thing. And anything we can do to survive the rest of 2020, um, we should have some fun. Uh, Candy said she got her book yesterday in Colorado, ordered from Barnes & Noble. Oh, thank you, Candy. It's beautiful and full of useful information. I hope that um, that is true, that you all feel like it is useful. Let's see. Okay, hold on. I'm going to take my glasses off. Yep, that's the right shed. And we're going to go there. I'm using this little tiny beater for this, but for the bigger areas, I really like the mag, this is a magpie. Um, it's a little bit heavier. This other one is, this one that I use for small things is a Threads Through Time beater from, she's on Etsy. I love them. I really love the small um, woodworking studios that make weaving tools. They make wonderful things. Okay, I need one more there. So my goal here is to get this blue to come over the top of that. And I should have gone over here. Let's see. That is my chair creaking. I bet you can hear that. I don't know what's going on with this chair. Um, oh, William says he does the Navajo shedding even on his handy woman loom and the speed up is worth the initial hassle. I think in this case, you're right, William. Um, in th this is going to have a fair amount of the 16 EPI. So this whole, you can't see that, but the whole here. This whole hand basket part right here is going to be at 16 EPI. And um, if I don't figure out a way to speed that up, it's going to take forever. Maybe I should just get the other, get another shedding device. There's room on this loom here to put another one. And because it doesn't hook like the Merix does, um, I could have the 16 EPI shedding device below the other one with the handle on the other side. I think uh, I've created a little hole there, which you can probably see, and I'm going to attempt to fill it in. Yep. Okay. Um, so the Navajo shedding is, um, 
if you've seen that, they use a flexible stick that is um, and then looped. So there's a flexible stick that goes along this way, a batten of some kind, and then they loop um, string heddles along it. But because the, and I guess the stick wouldn't have to be flexible, but if you've seen Navajo weavers work on big looms, um, when they pull that stick, it bends a little bit so they can just pull up the heddles of the area they're working in instead of having to pull so hard. This is my theory that this is why the stick is flexible. You have to pull really hard if the piece is wide and you, you know, pulling on it to get it to move means that all of those heddles at a very high tension have to move. Um, yeah, anyway, it's a great solution and um, gosh, just trying to see where I am here. All right. And again, this would be a lot easier. Okay. I think after this, I'll get to the point I wanted you to see. Yeah. Oh, good, Aniki, Book Depository. Um, she ordered my book from Book Depository, which I've ordered from them before, but are they a European company is my question. I know that she is in um, Europe. Kate says she got hers from, she ordered early and she's getting, supposed to get hers from Amazon on the 5th. So that's good to know. Thanks, Kate. Um, and Beth got a delivery notice for November 5 also. So it may depend if you ordered it later. I'm suspecting that they are running out because People are buying it. Thank you guys. I'm pretty pleased by how many people have wanted a copy so far. I'm very pleased. Not just a little pleased, I'm very pleased. Thank you all, it was a massive project and it's hopeful to know that it will be useful to people. Um, tattered cover, won't get it in until November 4. Hopefully they'll send it right after that, Carolyn. Or you can go pick it up maybe if you're in Denver um, or one of the other tattered covers. Okay, Barb, same thing. She ordered really early and Amazon says 11.5, which must be Thursday. So Betsy, perfect. She used 26 to warp the saffron double, and this is also 26 cotton saint twine. So um, for 16 EPI, it's a good size warp. Okay, so here's the little point where I want this to go over and fill this in. Oh gosh, here we go. Cannot see it. Okay, I want it to go right here. And then back. Okay. So there, that will fill in a little thing here. And then, let's see, can you see that? Yeah. And then this white will, so this is the same white I used to, to weave that and I just, brought the tail down the edge of this curve to right there and it's waiting. And now once I fill this in here, I can go back and forth and fill that in. And then I'll do the same thing. I'll bring this over and down to make that little line. Um, same thing here with this side on the blue. Up here, I don't know, how, that's pretty vertical. I might not have a little divider line much in there, but it will suggest it by the form. Those are the kind of little decisions in tapestry you have to make. Oh, welcome Martha from Costa Rica. Amazon says November 3. Great. That's awesome. Good to know that Amazon in Costa Rica is on their game. Um, glad some other people got the title. I know that many people didn't get it, but I don't really care. It makes me laugh. <laughs> um, Oh, good. Jessica said, yeah, I don't know, you guys. If you can, 
I found a new place to order books. It's called bookshop.org. And it's a um, place that benefits independent bookstores. And it's really, it seems cool. I don't, I think it's new. There's, I don't have a lot of experience with it, but bookshop.org. Um, you can either order it from a particular independent bookstore or you can order it right from them. And they will give a portion of the proceeds to independent bookstores. So I think that's really cool. And it's my new place to buy books. Uh. <laughs> I'm glad people are laughing. Um, yes, Alex, it's 26 cotton seam twine. Um. Oh, Marla, that's a good point. Yeah, so I never thought about this, but she's saying when I'm picking, I'm coming just above the thing that where the bottom is. And she's saying that she often picks up higher on the warp. It depends on what I'm weaving. If I'm weaving something small and it's at eight ends per inch or something, I can I can even use my fingers or I can see it better. When I am um, doing something this small, it's hard to see the, where the over unders are to make sure I get the right spot. So I'm only, you know, a half inch above where I last wove. And that's because I can see right away if I've picked up the wrong warp. And that is easier. So that's why I'm doing that. Okay. I will finish that later and I'll just show you. Let's look at here. Let's move that over a little bit so you can see this part. Um, this part is at eight inches per inch. And three strands of Harrisville Kohler Singles, which is a much fluffier yarn. And so here I can fill in on the top of where those, where the blue went. I'm experimenting here. I don't know yet if I'm going to like it. I wanted to have a little darker color at the very top. So this part will be at the very top of the design here where that yellow is. And I wanted it to be a little bit darker at the top. And I don't quite have the right yellow and I was not committed enough to go dye it. So I took this fairly bright orange yellow and mixed it with, so these two colors, I don't know. I'll let you know after I weave a little more. So here is that thing where the blue had split these two warps and I am, what am I going to do? It's always a guessing game. Sometimes I have to change my decision, but I'm just going to go around those two warps and see if that will fill in nicely. What I don't want is little gaps where you can see that the set, that the um, over under pattern isn't quite right where those two different sets meet. So as long as I um, can't see that, it's fine. I am helped, of course, by the Harrisville Highland being so fluffy fuzzy. Um, um, Nan, I can't remember the Magpie. I haven't looked at their website for a long time. I think it's called Magpie Woodworks. I think it's just magpiewoodworks.com. Marsha wants to know um, what the Weaver's Bazaar name of this blue is, and I just happen to have the tag, Marsha. Let's see if, oh, I cut it in half. Let's see if I can, let's see if I can see this. Um, it is satire blue, color 180155, but, um, Oh no, Saltier, S-A-L-T-I-R-E, blue. And it is quite um, bright and it's very blue. It's not, um, there's not, I don't think there's much red in it. It's right in the middle of the blue. You know what I mean? It's right in the middle of the blues. It's not too warm and not too cool. I mean, it's cool because it's blue, but 
Anyway. Saltier. You're lucky that ball band was in there. I would have had no idea. Um. <laughs> and Nikki, did I vote? I voted. I just haven't dropped my ballot in the slot yet, but I will do it today. Um, we had big snow, and so I've been avoiding driving because the roads are a mess. They don't actually plow our street, so it is now melted out enough that I'm not going to have to do any massive shoveling. It's the thing where, you know, you get a big pile of snow and ice at the bottom of your driveway and it's like, well, am I going to go somewhere? I'm going to wait for that to melt because it's going to get warmer. So I, I chose melt. Anyway, yes, no worries. Voting is happening. And I hope all of you from the USA are voting. Um, good. I'm glad a bunch of you still are getting notices that you're getting the book early. If you get that notice from Amazon that your book isn't coming till December and you really want it earlier, you could, um, they don't charge you until, I'm pretty sure, at least in the USA, they don't charge you until they send the book. So you could cancel that order and order it from, see if you can find it somewhere else. Maybe you should try to find it somewhere else first and then cancel the other order. Um. Oh yeah, see Jessica's having that same problem, so... Um, okay, so what happened there? Oh no, that's right. Okay, so this is almost filled in. So here's one of those spots where I'm probably going to grab this warp when I go back instead of both of them, although... Actually, I think I probably will grab both of them. Occasionally, there's a thing where um, it depends on what this angle is. If it's shallower, there's a sp uh, there might be a time where I want only half of this instead of both of those warps. Is what I'm trying inexpertly to say. But in this case, oh, I see my shed stick is screwing me up. Am I gonna go there? Yeah. I still have this thing up here and it's um, messing up my shedding, but yeah, I think that's going to be okay. Oh, Anne says she doesn't have a delivery date. Um, I'm sorry, you guys. I do think that Amazon didn't order enough. This is my guess. I haven't heard this for sure, but... Um, and they're waiting for more to arrive. Um, let's see if you had any more questions about this before I... Um, Aniki, the blue compared to the white has the same weft. Yes, so they're both, all of these colors in here are Weaver's Bazaar. Um, 18.2, 18 18.2, it's their fine yarn, Weaver's Bazaar from the UK. Uh, Weaver's Bazaar does, they, um, I have a, I've been ordering their yarn for a long time, so I have some of their yarn that was from a long time ago, and it is slightly different, but I haven't, and this white, I think, is one of those. It's just, I'm not sure, I can't even characterize what the difference is. It's just not identical. There's something different in the spin or something, but they're the same size, and, um, Every bit of yarn I've gotten from them in the last several years has been the same, and they are now sending it on cones, not on these uh, little balls. I kind of like the balls, but... Um, uh, Marla, I don't think it matters. So she's saying that I'm, I usually pack in towards the tail. Um, I, I most often pack in towards the tail, and I maybe I'm not paying attention to what I'm doing here, but... Um, so for example, in this, here, let me put this in neutral. If I was packing this in, I often will start here because I want to use, especially at this set, I want to use the tip of this to get that turn nice and firm. And then would just keep going this way. However, a lot of times when I, probably here, I was w packing it any which way. If I get the bubbles the way I want them, it doesn't matter. If 
you're modulating how much weft goes in by the way you're if you're holding the you know tail and you're modulating how much goes in by the way you're beating and this is true with bobbins for sure um, you want to go from exactly like you're saying from this side out to where the tail is because that allows more weft to come in if you need it so that was a great thing to um, definitely a great thing to notice and think about it does affect weft tension and you are correct that it does matter at sometimes um, when I'm weaving on my big Harrisville rug loom if I'm weaving all in a line which isn't all the time I'm probably am bubbling and then beating with the um, beater and the loom in which case it all gets packed in I'm shifting the shed which holds maybe that's the other thing Marla is that I'm using a loom where I sh can shift the shed before I beat which I'm not really doing on this 16 EPI, but in general, that's what I do. And that holds the wefts in there and then I can beat it. And I don't think it matters that much which direction, but it might, depending on the yarn and stuff you're using or the design, um, it's just, it might be situation dependent. That's nice, Kate. That is a good reason to order from Amazon. She's saying that um, pre-ordering from Amazon um, means you can review the book on Amazon, which is always helpful um, for new books just coming out. It is very nice to have people who are going to give you good reviews um, do that on Amazon. So those of you who bought it, they'll only allow you to do that if you bought it from Amazon. But if you did buy it from Amazon and you want to leave a review, especially if you want to leave a five-star review, um, please go for it. Um, yes, Jessica has shed sticks from, um, would, oh, I probably haven't seen that Jessica. I also just got a new shed stick from somebody. Um, but I don't know where it is. So the blue compared to the white have the same number of wefts. I'm not sure what you mean. Maybe Aniki, it's the same weft and the same number of sequences, maybe. I'm not counting, so it's possible they're off in terms of there might be more sequences in the blue than in the white. I'm not sure, I'm just trying to beat evenly and fill in the shapes and it will be fine. It's close enough. I think that might be what you're asking. Um, <laughs> satire would be the perfect, satire blue would be the perfect for your title. True, Mary, very true. Um, oh, saltier blue is the blue used in the Scottish flag. Thank you, Anna. See, that was a, um, that was something that didn't, um, that I didn't know, obviously. Having not spent any time yet in Scotland, I was hoping to go in the spring, but it doesn't look like that's going to happen now, does it? Um, yes. Okay, good, Harlan. Interesting. Amazon notice, notified him that November 5th is official for this area. And that's my wonder is if it depends on where you are. If Amazon has prioritized the book and the warehouses all over the U.S. and if they've prioritized it for areas of the country where, um, they thought they were going to sell more. Texas is a place. Sorry, Jessica. Um, is a place where I don't have a ton of tapestry weavers and maybe they know, I don't know how they would know that though. Uh, okay, cool. I'm glad that um, many of you are getting that delivery date. I'm sorry for those of you who are hearing that they are sending it in December. So if that is distressing, you can definitely order somewhere else and um, get, they won't have charged you on Amazon, I don't think. Anyway, um, this piece is really fun. I will keep working on it. I will be back for Change the Shed on the 11th. And um, next week I'll be doing a, a little webinar thing on the 3rd. My book launch <laughs> was supposed to be yesterday. And um, yeah, anyway, the book didn't make it into the warehouse in time. So the official release date is next Tuesday, which as those of you in the U.S. know, is Election Day, probably those of you all over the world. So um, 
uh, maybe it will be a positive thing on um, a day that some sort of distraction and um, only come to the talk on the third if you have already voted um, or if you know you can vote after it. It's at 11 a.m. Mountain. I will be doing the same talk on Saturday the 7th at 4 p.m. Mountain. So if you're working on Tuesday or you are voting on Tuesday, come on Saturday. It'll be the same thing. Um, and that's also for people in Australia because 11 a.m. here is the middle of the night in Australia. So um, 4 p.m. is a time that they can come. Okay, so... Oh, great. Evelyn said Amazon UK, the book is out of stock. So she ordered from Weaver's Bazaar. They are also carrying it. I don't know how many she has, but she says she's gotten lots of orders. And um, so definitely you can always even email Weaver's Bazaar and say, hey, do you have, do you have them? Can I get one? She may actually have the books now. So Weaver's Bazaar would be a great place. If you're in the UK, Weaver's Bazaar would be a great place to order it from or anywhere in Europe, maybe. Um, and Nikki says she always um, orders from Book Depository, and I think she is in Eastern Europe. Uh, I could, am I right about that? Yes. And Nikki, correct me if I'm wrong. Probably. Also, always say your name wrong. I'm so sorry. Um, okay, cool. Y'all are great. Um, it's Remembrance Day on the 11th in Canada. Oh, I actually didn't know that, Christine. Um, so it's a bit of a holiday in Canada on Saturday. Thank you all. I am, again, rambling, and I'm glad that you're here. I'll be back um, with much progress on this piece, I hope, in two weeks. And um, you may actually see it next week here and there also as I'm talking about... Um, the book and just celebrating the fact that it's finished. <laughs> um, okay, Marla ordered through Bookshop. That is, and she got it yesterday, so bookshop.org is what I was talking about, and um, she already got her, so that's cool. Yes, Hungary. That is what I had in my head. Um, book Depository. Ginger says they have good service. I think I've also ordered from them. Um, anyway, thanks to you all. Thanks for coming and chatting with me and um, entertaining my questions. I have added, I you know, I'll talk about this next time, but this also has silk in the edges so you can see the, um, here you can see that these lines have silk around them. That was because of the fire. So we'll see if I add any more areas of more silk. Cool. Thanks, you all. I will see you, some of you, next week in the webinars and then in two weeks on Change the Shed. And keep weaving and stay sane and go vote if you're in the U.S. Bye, y'all.